Of all the animals, the dog is truly humanity's best friend. Descended from gray wolves, archaeological data suggests that dogs were domesticated more than once over the last 30,000 years. The surviving lineage of dogs seems to have diverged from wolves about 15,000 years ago in East uh, Asia or the Middle East. Simple reason that dogs were domesticated is that they helped people survive, and it remains the reason that dogs are associated with humans worldwide. Arguably the most important reason that dogs were domesticated was their use in hunting, which is still important today. Other uses documented from antiquity forward include herding, hauling, tracking, guiding, protection, warfare, companionship, and food. The people who became American Indians brought dogs to the New World with them. Uh, on this slide you could see uh, the upper left is a fowling camp uh, up in the eastern uh, coast of Canada, and then a Plains uh, Indian uh, a bison uh, chase. And Dogs are not so good at actually carrying weight, but they're awfully, uh, but they're actually very good at dragging it. Uh, so of course the toboggan in the lower right, uh, an Ojibwe family around the Great Lakes, and then the upper left was a dog pulling travoy. <laughs> and the last use, and probably not the best one for dogs, is as food. Um, the Spanish conquistadors actually noted that there was a, a fat little dog with a curly tail that was bred specifically for food that they encountered smaller than the regular dog. So turning to archaeology, uh, the American bottom of southwestern Illinois uh, has sites that date from the, the archaic period about 1,000, from about 1,000 BC, or before 1,000 BC up to the present, up to Mississippian, that have had dog remains in them. And we've excavated several, but not all of these sites. Uh, the earliest is Modoc Rock Shelter, not actually excavated by ISS uh, several decades ago. There were a couple of dog burials there that are uh, probably date to the archaic period, but we're not sure exactly where. There was no good provenience information. But going north of the American bottom, uh, along the lower Illinois River Valley, the Coster site, a very deeply stratified site, had uh, purposely buried dog. Uh, they were in purposely built graves in the same area as humans, uh, where humans were buried. Uh, one site that ISS did dig, and I was involved with for a few years, was called the Jane B. Good site. We dug it back in the 2000s, and we have over 80 individual dogs, uh, dog skeletons from the site dating from the late woodland period about 650 to 1050 AD, and then the Mississippian period uh, that followed 1050 to 1400. Uh, the Mississippians were uh, corn agriculturalists and had a society that was uh, actually very large, large civilization with uh, monumental architecture, things like that. So most of the dogs were uh, buried in pits. These weren't specially dug graves. These were actually storage pits that were abandoned, and the dead dogs were simply placed in the bottom and then uh, filled up with dirt. We did have a number of uh, dogs that were missing their heads. Um, sometimes we just found isolated heads. Interesting, the headless dogs were all male, uh, so there must be some significance to that. We also found just pieces and parts of dogs all around. And this may reflect practices that happened during the historic period in disease curing ceremonies where dogs were killed and then strung up and allowed to decay, and then when they, they were taken down and buried. Uh, this may reflect similar types of practices. And a little bit more evidence that dogs perhaps are being sacrificed or at least used in ritual contexts is this burial from the site. The dogs are uh, bound sort of back to back, facing south, the land of the spirits, uh, with their heads facing east and west. Uh, the size of the dogs was pretty small overall, probably 25, 30 pounds, not much larger. We didn't find two size categories, so we don't have what seems to be food dogs and then hunting dogs. In fact, the skulls on the left show the entire range of, almost the entire range of variation. Uh, sexual dimorphism even just covers that. So very uniform. We also found some fractures in the spines of the dogs that's very similar to what we see in modern sled dogs, indicating that these villagers probably used the dogs to haul firewood and rock and things like that. Uh, during the Mississippian period, as I mentioned, they were corn agriculturalists. We start to see the dogs sacrificed but appearing in more ritually charged contexts. This uh, example shows a dog in a burial mound. We see lots of instances of things like that. <laughs> and uh, sort of the rut row you know, moment for dogs is that for the first time, we get clear evidence that dogs are being killed and eaten uh, as food. We see butchery marks. We see burning on the bones. Uh, and it occurs at lots of Mississippi, several Mississippian sites in the area. So sort of the moral of the story is something we see all throughout the Americas is that when people eat lots of corn, when they rely on corn, they start eating their dogs. Uh, so, you know, we could sort of talk about corn dogs and hush puppies, but that's, uh, that's kind of where that ends.